Hold on on tight tight for the the next next hour. hour. You're entering entering into a place, a zone zone called called the alternative to the alternative alternative media. media. It's a place, a special place, where even truth seekers fear to tread. All right, people, let's move like we've got a purpose. Affirmative. Okay, welcome back to the Investigative Journal. On this, uh, it's, it's December 27th, 2018, day on our calendar. Greg Anthony here, the Investigative Journal. Haven't been with you for a while, been taking a couple months off. And sometimes it's good to do that, kind of to reflect and see where the world is in your vision. That's what we're going to talk about today. What is your vision of where the world is going to in 2019? Can you believe it's 2019? I guess if you were born in 2000, it wouldn't matter, would it? But when you're born in like uh, 1955, 65, you start going, wow, 2019? How many more Christmases do I have? to spend. Well, I hope you had a good Christmas. And I wanted to talk a little bit about that first, because Christmas has always troubled me in a sense, because I was born into the Catholic Church. And of course, I thought it was a Christian church for a long time, then I realized it wasn't. But anyway, then I met a lot of Christian friends, and everybody celebrates Jesus's birthday on December 25th. But we know he wasn't even born on December 25th, so why do we celebrate it on the 25th? It's because everybody else does. Follow the leader. The leaders want us to celebrate it on December 25th. Why? Because this is a good time to remind people of really the historical truth behind this holiday. Now, I've done shows in the past where I talk about all the pagan symbols and signs of Christmas, all the pagan symbols and signs of Easter. Every holiday, of course, we're living in a pagan world, and you got to realize that. But the fact is that nobody knows really when Jesus was born, the exact day. I have a better idea. Now, I've got several, well, maybe five dogs. A couple are pound dogs, and you never get their date of birth. But I know that a couple of my, I have a better idea of my dog's birth than I do of Jesus. Now, some say he was born in winter, some say in spring, and they can't pin down a day. So we got to figure out a day, right? Well, the pagan leaders of our world decided to do it on the 25th. Now, why? Early Christian church hijacked the old solar New Year holiday, yes, and replaced the sun with Jesus. That's right, sun worship. Now here's the real deal. The sun sets at its most northern point on December 21st. That's the winter solstice. For three days afterwards, it appears to set at the same place. And then on December 25th, the birth the Hebrew rising, it starts setting further south, marking the birth of the sun, the solar new year. Thus, the Christian church needs to confess and tell people the truth about Christmas without in any way denying the wonderful teachings of Christ and Christianity. Now, we know that many people believe that Christ is the Savior, that he is the you know, son of God, that he was born, died, and resurrected into heaven. Now we know there's a lot of people that think he was a prophet. Then there's a lot of people that don't think he was anything. Some people say that he he died. Others say he didn't die. Others say he scattled, uh, skadoodled to France with his family and lived there until a ripe old age, and his bloodline continues today. So there's a lot of different opinions about Jesus, right? So you have your own, and that to me is perfectly fine. So, what about the Jews? Now, for me, my mother was Jewish. My father, and she was, she grew up as a Catholic. Uh, and then my father was Catholic. Never went to, he wasn't much of a churchgoer. And we've talked about that story of why he wasn't a churchgoer, but we can leave that for another day. 
It had to do with the Catholic Church wanting to put me and my brother in an orphanage after my mother died. My dad kicked the priest down the steps, told him to get the hell out of our house and never come back, and he never sent my brother to a Catholic school again. That's the short story. Now, the Jews, for their part, they need to stop celebrating the xenophobic Hanukkah and realize that it is a perfectly kosher to celebrate the solar new year. Right. All you leaders in Israel who are pretending to be Jews, why don't you do that? Now, I know there's really traditional Jews that believe that Christ hasn't risen yet or hasn't come back yet. The Savior has not returned. And that's fine with me. You can have your Jewish belief, whatever you want. But get with it. Start celebrating like the leaders want you to. They want you to celebrate the solstice, the solar new year. And they want to tell you that they're celebrating Christ. Now, the Jews don't want to do that because they don't think Christ uh, has come back yet. So, there's a dilemma. But anyway, we all know the leaders in Israel are just like the leaders in America, bought and paid for by the Vatican. So, that is my take on... Christmas this year. Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit about your vision of the future, what you expect to happen in the next two years, the next four years. And uh, I want to go back a little ways, though, first, and talk about my experience in Rome in the 80s, when I first learned about the Vatican-led New World Order and all of its tentacles. And it was a long process. And I didn't quite get what was going on between the Vatican and the governments of the world, but uh, being there helped me to get started. Now, I want to start with 1991, September 11th, 1991. And this is interesting because we all talk about, at least on alternative news, uh, George Bush is senior. He just passed away, right? His speech that he gave, his New World Order live speech. And we forget that it happened on September 11th, 1991. Is that a coincidence? We all know what happened in 2001. And I don't think so. So let's listen to George Bush Give us that uh, one minute and 51, I got one minute and 51 seconds here of his New World Order speech. Because this, to me, is the vision of the power elite, the Vatican-led New World Order, where they want to take us, but they kind of flip-flop things. They make everything sound so neat and tidy that they're doing a good thing for us, to give us a new world of peace and tranquility. When in fact, they're giving us just the opposite. Let's listen to George Bush Sr. Certain that we stand at a defining hour. Halfway around the world, we are engaged in a great struggle in the skies and on the seas and sands. We know why we're there, drawn together in common cause to achieve the universal aspirations of mankind, peace and security, freedom and the rule of law. Such is a world worthy of our struggle and worthy of our children's future. If it is possible, I want to continue to build a lasting basis for U.S.-Soviet cooperation for a more peaceful future for all mankind. The triumph of democratic ideas in Eastern Europe and Latin America and the continuing struggle for freedom elsewhere, all around the world, all confirm the wisdom of our nation's founders. Tonight, we work to achieve another victory, a victory over tyranny and savage aggression. Okay, so there you have that uh, New World Order speech that George Bush gave in 1991. And it, uh, for those of you who have that vision of globalism, there's many, many people in America 
Then, of course, uh, you stand beside Mr. Bush and follow the globalist path towards freedom, towards liberty, towards the rule of law. When, in fact, if you have another vision, when you understand that they speak out of both sides of their mouth, what up is down, what black is white, he's creating what's called a fascist world. And what is to come of this new world order that George Bush talked about? If you have a different vision. And the vision of many people on the alternative side is something like this. Every year that I've been doing this show, there's always the, the stories that come out that say, this is going to be the year of the big downfall in America. The dollar's going to collapse. America's going into martial law, etc., etc. And this goes on and on and on every year. But if we look at how the New World Order really operates, they do it in increments, slowly. And the question you have to ask yourself is, are we moving in a direction towards liberty and peace and tranquility, freedom, or are we moving in a fascist direction, however slowly it may be? And I guess you'd have to really, and there's not many people out here that would dispute what I say, that we're moving in a fascist direction, however slowly it may be. You see our freedoms being taken away. You see the world always in a state of chaos and war. So this idea that George Bush was talking about in 1991 to at least now in 2020 doesn't seem to match the words, does it? His words mean that we should be incrementally moving towards a lasting peace, towards freedom, towards what the Constitution of the United States says. But if you look at 1991 till today, we're moving in the other direction. So, his words are hollow, shallow, and you shouldn't believe them because we're not moving in a direction of freedom and peace and tranquility. We're moving in a global direction of, un of unity for the elite, of peace for the elite, of a paring down of society, of a, of a loss of our freedoms, of a moral decay to a point I've never seen in my life what's going on today. First of all, let's talk about a couple things in the news. The Pope, Pope Francis, has basically given his pardon to 2,000 pedophile priests. And go to the story about the Pope absolving these pedophiles. And then while you're at it, turn on the uh, Kevin Spacey video. We all know Kevin Spacey's a talented actor, a child... Well, he's not accused in the courts yet, so let's give him his day in court. But Kevin Spacey's just a spokesperson for the pedophile rings in America, I believe, at the high levels in the Vatican and in our government. And because he's an actor, he can get away with this video he just did. I mean, the guy's been charged with um, sexual assault and battery of a, of a minor, and this, I think, is from Nantucket. He's been accused and, and been in, under investigation, not only here in America and many different states, but also in the UK. And we all know he's a star on the House of Cards, etc., etc. But after being charged with this crime, he came up with this bizarre uh, rant. And you got to go listen to it, and it just shows you the moral decay in this country because he's actually almost admitting what he's doing and justifying it and in a crazy kind of way. And now any defense lawyer <laughs> would shudder and basically pull out his hair if he's representing Spacey. But go listen to and read the stories about the Pope absolving the pedophile priests, and then go to Kevin Spacey and, and see about the moral, you know, look at the moral decay going on in our country. So, if you have a vision of George H. Bush Sr., 
it should we should be moving in a direction of more freedom, more peace, more liberty, but we're not. Every aspect of our society is closing down in on us, right? We're seeing the world kind of turn into this kind of uh, fascist, you know, look at the Chinese, what they're doing. And then look at America, uh, stalemated over rhetoric in Congress. They, these people no, <laughs> no sooner want to help you than they do. They'd rather just, you know, these I, I look at our American government and just say they're all backstabbers. And they say one thing. I mean, if you listen to Fox News or CNN or CBS, your view in the world is distorted, my friends. Now, I'm going to talk in terms of, I talked in terms of rationality so far, in terms of incremental movement towards a new world order. Well, what about what it could lead to? What's going on? What about bank closures coming up, riots, cities burning, starvation, chaos, martial law, gun confiscation, FEMA camps, constitutional rights obliterated, globalist takeovers, disease, despair, gangs, lawlessness, crime, and you name it, and much more will soon be unfolding if the words of George W. George H. Bush uh, are nothing but double talk, which they are, because that's the movement the world is moving in now. Look at, add this, um, this, the certainty of the coming regional Middle East wars involving China, North Korea, Iran, Syria, Lebanon, Saudi Arabia, Turkey, and Israel. You know, we said a long time ago the world stands at a precipice for World War III, but realize that most of the population is completely, totally unaware of what is about to happen. Because relatively few people follow the alternative media. Yeah, that's true. Very, very few. And so, people that are speaking in these terms, in, in terms of, you know, these, uh, the world changing overnight, seem to be out in left field, right? But in a sense, if you look at what George Bush said in 1991 and see how the world is moving, they're not too far off. Their timing may be off, but in the end, <laughs> if you're getting your nightly news dose of government propaganda from NBC, Fox, CNN, CBS, ABC, you're really out in left field. Because what is also interesting is the economic and war cycles are coming to a climax at this point, don't you Don't you see? I, I look at things and I see this constant, people say, well, the stock market's not a good uh, indication of what's happening. Well, I think uh, if you see the swings and the shifts that are going on, losing 500 points in a day, gaining 1,000, going down, up and down, along with what's happening economically in the world, you'll see there's a shift. And you'll also see a shift going on in war cycles that are coming up now. Casualty rates will be, this time, be astronomic. They talk about prop population reduction in America alone is being predicted to be really like 80%. That means only 20% survival rate of 65 million will be alive by the year 2020, some 2025. If you live in America today, some people say your chances of surviving to 2020, 2025, if you lead a healthy life, uh, one in five. Not good. But don't be too quick to dismiss all this. Because nothing that this criminal regime won't do to stay in power. So if you're shaking your head going, this can never happen. Think back about the people in Poland and in Germany that were one night at an opera enjoying themselves and the next night in concentration camps. That's about how quick it happened. So some people say, buckle up and get used to it. Others say, trust in God for your life. Use wisdom. Get skilled at needed job trades. Store some food, water, cash, guns, 
gold, toiletries, batteries, books, medications, <laughs> and keep gathering truthful information before it becomes illegal. Is it going to become illegal to think? Well, of course, it is now. Because most people don't. And if they did, they'd be in jail. That's correct. Because people right now are following the leader, especially in America. And, you know, you can, you can say what you want. But I think that pretty well explains the visions of people. Uh, you either are on the side of trusting that what George H. Bush said was true and saying, oh, wow, we're heading towards a global world. That's going to be great. So let's tear down America borders. Let's tear down everything. What do you think they're doing in Washington right now? Tearing down our borders. They're tearing down America. And they're doing it using the Hegelian dialectic of one side fighting against the other. And in the end... It's pretty obvious who's going to win. That's the globalists. And you know why? Because if you look at just an analogy here, for the last two years, the Republican Congress, Senate, and a presidency that calls itself America First could not even get border security. That gives you our Obamacare taking, getting, you know, getting rid of Obamacare. If they can't do that, that tells you pretty much they're in the pocket of the globalists as well. And they're just playing the Hegelian dialectic with you. So don't believe Trump. Don't believe Schumer and Pelosi on the Democratic side. Because all you're going to get is that same old, you know, he said, she said, one side fighting the other. And in the end, we're moving in the direction opposite of what George H. Bush was saying in 1991. We're moving in a direction of fascism, not freedom. And that's obvious. Now, the last few, you know, the last 10 minutes I was talking in terms of things changing by the, with a snap of a finger. Could that happen? Of course. But if this incremental change towards fascism, fascism continues, those words that I just told you will be real one day. I can't tell you when. I can't say it's going to happen in 2019. But it will happen because that is the direction we're moving in. Unless there was a complete shift, unless there was something that was so as to, you know, that would be, you know, diametrically opposed to what I just said. If there was a complete shift towards freedom, wow, then you wouldn't be saying someday 80% of Americans may not be here. But we know who's in control, and we know the direction they're taking us into. So let's not, you know, talk over, <laughs> let's not get in arguments over semantics and timing. We are moving in a fascist direction. We can at least say that. Uh, you're listening to the Investigative Journal. I'm usually here every day for the last, I don't know, 10 years, uh, taking some time off. Hopefully I'll get back after the holidays, January 3rd to be precise, on a more regular schedule. But until then, uh, enjoy this show, and I'll be back in January. Back in three minutes on the Investigative Journal. The book of Revelation says, The spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus Christ. This is at the very heart of FirstAmendmentRadio.com. In that spirit, we have created the Prophecy Reality News app for all of your mobile devices. Streaming First Amendment Radio 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Available for your Apple, Android device, and smartphone absolutely free. Get the Prophecy Reality News app installed today so you can listen to First Amendment Radio wherever you are. The Prophecy Reality News app. Get it now. Visit CrossTheBorder.org, C-R-O-S-S, CrossTheBorder.org, to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of Nicholas Arthur's new book titled, When the Third Temple is Built. That's CrossTheBorder.org.
When it comes to prophecy today, much of the evangelical Christian world has their eyes on Israel, waiting and watching to see when the third temple will begin to be built. The plans are drawn, the Jewish people are eager. Most evangelical Christians today believe that the rapture will happen before the third temple is built. Hi, I'm Michael Eugene. I was taught that Daniel's 70th week was in the future. Is that really what the Bible teaches? Have we searched the scriptures and found this to be true? Why is it so important for a reestablished Israel to build a third temple in Jerusalem? Is it necessary to build a temple on the same location already occupied by the Dome of the Rock? Is it necessary for sacrifices to take place in the temple on Temple Mount? Is there really a rapture followed by seven years of tribulation? What is the New Testament temple? Can we identify history and prophecy? Who is the first beast in Revelation chapter 13? Who are the seven kings in Revelation 17? I have asked all these questions and I have found Nicholas Arthur's new book, When the Third Temple is Built, answers all these questions and more using scripture to interpret scripture. The Bible says that no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation. Nicholas shows us in his new book, When the Third Temple is Built, how the Bible interprets prophecy and not man's private interpretation. Visit CrossTheBorder.org, C-R-O-S-S, CrossTheBorder.org to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of Nicholas Arthur's new book titled, When the Third Temple is Built. That's CrossTheBorder.org. The following, the following program, program is labeled dangerous, dangerous and off-limits limits by the, by the Supreme, Supreme Jesuit, Jesuit Command. command. But, stand but stand tall, tall people. people. Listen, Listen up, 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 and you, you may, may just, just learn, learn something. something. Oh, dear Lord Jesus, this ain't happening, man. This can't be happening, man. This ain't happening. Okay, folks, we're back for the second half hour of the Investigative Journal on this, uh, what's it, two days after the winter solstice sun rebirth. Right? That's what we talked about in the first half hour. A little bit anyway. But before I get to, uh, I want to play a video because uh, my voice is going today. And before that, I want to paraphrase a little bit. If you don't think the Vatican's involved in this, uh, I recommend you do some research. And again, it's that story of how fast, uh, you know, the Vatican has a long history of fascism and a long history of siding with uh, the powers of evil. Now, we all know what Malachi Martin, a former Jesuit priest, said that back in the early 60s, there was this Luciferian ceremony and they brought Lucifer into the Vatican. Uh, very true. Whether Malachi Martin was a spokesman for them or not is questionable. But anyway, we know that. Now, I know for a fact when I was in Rome that I had some interesting conversations with people who would verify what Malachi Martin said. Now, recently, Francis, Pope Francis, stated, I'm going to, you know, paraphrase him a bit, World War III has already begun. And he made another chilling comment when in early December he stated, listen to this, while the world starves, burns, and descends further into chaos, we should realize that this year's Christmas celebrations, for those who choose to celebrate, it may be their last. By this time next year, oh boy, the world will likely be unrecognizable. So folks, get ready. The New World Order is about to launch something in full swing. And I say that, <laughs> and I start thinking to myself, why am I saying that? Do I want it to happen quickly, get it over with? Or would I like to see the world just hanging on a string, you know, and slowly descending into fascism? I guess, uh, for an impatient man like myself, I might as well get it over with, right? So get ready. New World Order is about to launch something big, right? Turning your world upside down. And at least then I can say, I told you so, right? All these people over the years that have doubted uh, the words that uh, this show has tried to talk about. Uh, I can say, hey, see, I told you so. But anyway, plans are moving. 
you'd have to admit, a little bit on a fast track. As this corrupt criminal regime currently occupying the highest political, religious, financial positions in the world are being driven by this evil demonic influence. So why don't we talk to some other people about that and listen to what they have to say. Okay, so what I want to do here, uh, I'm going to be back after the holiday, after the first, on the third, I believe. And I'll try to keep a more regular schedule on the investigative journal. But I wanted to play this. It's called Future Shock 2016 to 2020. Now, I was on the record when Trump was elected saying that we would enter into a huge global conflict before his first four years are over. So I've got two years left. See if what I say comes true. Now, let's listen to Future Shock. Now, again, let's listen in this context. That if you don't believe it's going to happen tomorrow, believe that incrementally we are moving in a fascist direction. I don't think you can deny that. I also don't think you can deny another thing. If you guys listen to mainstream, and you have to, you're seeing a two divergent groups appear. On the left, you're seeing globalism. On the right, you're seeing America first, right? And if you start thinking about your views of freedom, your views of, uh, you know, the First Amendment rights, your Second Amendment rights, etc., etc., you're going you're gonna to align yourself pretty much with Fox News, right? And a lot of the things that they're saying on the conservative side. Now, if you're a globalist and believe in no borders, etc., you're going to side with, of course, CNN. But the interesting thing is, none of these people on either side really get to the root cause. You can listen to some of the more intelligent shows on Fox, uh, Life, Levin, and Liberty, or whatever he is, you know, Mark Levin. Or you can listen to uh, what, Sean Hannity, others. And you're going to see that this, this, this ringing of this freedom bell is right there, but they really never want to get to the real root cause of this. Uh, and they don't because they're on the same team, I believe. Because I don't believe men like this can get to that position without understanding the Vatican connection and talking about it truthfully. And if they did, they wouldn't be there, which tells you that something's up in Denmark, right? So, this future shock is going to talk in general terms about what could happen if we move quickly towards fascism. But in the end, if we move incrementally like what's going on now, we're going to be there someday, right? So, it might be worth listening to. Here we go. Future shock, 2016-2020. Here we go. not sure that the world is ready to receive this. If you don't answer the fire bell when you're a fireman, things burn to the ground. And that's exactly what's going to happen to America. It's going to burn to the ground. Get out, get out, get out. Recession, depression, currency wars, trade wars, and you know the rest, world war. I see a total systemic collapse of the United States. I see a total systemic collapse of the U.S. dollar and the financial system, which is why I urge everybody to get out, get out, get out. One every trillion dollar economic extinction level event is about to strike America. Viewer discretion is advised. We are moving into a land of both shadow and substance, of desperation, anguish, and national disaster. Our next stop... America's coming nightmare. Government, military, and intelligence community have begun to implement emergency measures. Yet the American people have been kept in the dark about everything. Recently, all 16 branches of our intelligence community have come together to release a shocking briefing that contained an alarming consensus. These agencies, that include the CIA, FBI, Army, and Navy, 
They've already begun to estimate the impact of the fall of the dollar as the global reserve currency, and our reign as the world's leading superpower being annihilated in a way equivalent to the end of the British Empire post-World War II. And the end game could be a nightmarish scenario where the world falls into an extended period of global anarchy. And we're on the verge of entering the darkest economic period in our nation's history, one that will ignite a 25-year Great Depression. Some might be surprised to learn that the fate of America's economy has already been determined, verified, and announced by the Obama White House. Yet, it has received scant attention from the corporate media. In 2011, economist Kyle Bass interviewed a senior member of the Obama administration about its planned solutions for fixing the U.S. economy in trade deficit. This single seven-word response clarifies everything, explains everything and leaves little else to discuss. We're just going to kill the dollar. There it is, the entire agenda in one short sentence. It explains everything we've been seeing domestically and globally. That one statement makes every other question irrelevant, or otherwise answers all economic questions and explains everything. Nothing else matters. I urge you to ponder that statement and all it implies. Doing so will provide you with the clarity to understand not only what is taking place today, but what is yet to come. It is important to note the specificity of the word kill. Stated in the active voice, it means an unambiguously intentional and deliberate act. The murder of our national currency, the United States dollar, is the ultimate agenda to be implemented under Obama. To kill our national currency will subvert the United States and destroy it from within. Obama is running up trillions upon trillions upon trillions of dollars in new debt, wherein the Obama regime is actively trying to mathematically collapse the United States. And I firmly believe that they've done it. They've reached critical mass. It can't be walked back now. This begs a number of questions, including what type of Americans would actually have as their objective, the destruction of our national currency. To whom do they hold their allegiance, if not to the American people, whose life's work as well as the toil of our ancestors is represented in the form of wealth held in U.S. dollars? Does this make any sense to us as Americans? The answer is, of course, no. By its very definition, to kill our national currency is an act of high treason by those engaged in this activity. It undermines the very sovereignty and survival of our nation and will have a life-changing impact on every citizen in the U.S. It will also impact every nation and the people of every nation on the planet, as the U.S. dollar is presently the world's reserve currency. It is an act that should result in the filing of criminal charges against the conspirators a trial of their peers, and if convicted, a death sentence. It's that serious. This was all done intentionally. It's called the Cloward and Piven strategy. Richard Cloward and Francis Fox Piven were two lifelong members of the Democratic Socialists of America who taught sociology at Columbia University. Piven later went on to City University of New York. In May 1966, Nation magazine, that's a real red magazine, an article titled The Way to the Poor, they outlined their strategy, proposing to use grassroots radical organizations to push ever more strident demands for public services at all levels of government. The result they predicted would be a profound financial and political crisis that would unleash powerful forces for major economic reform at the national level. Do not be deluded by the propaganda. Their ultimate goal is to leave us so discouraged, demoralized, and exhausted that we throw our hands up in defeat. As Barney Frank said, the middle class will be too distracted to fight. That's not just Barney Frank, pretty close to Saul Linsky. Washington Times had an editorial today talking about how this influx threatens to transform the nation. They say this is a man-made disaster, but they say that this threatens to transform the nation. Do you believe that? I think what we're seeing now is the, the old piven cloward strategy applied to policy. This is the, this idea that you overload the system with crisis, and the system has a limited amount of capacity 
to deal with one crisis at a time. So we're now at a point where there, you know you get the EPA and then you have the Taliban and now you have uh, you know student loans and then the next day we have an immigration crisis. We can't deal with this. Uh, it, Washington is not equipped to deal with it. Uh, and this sort of opens up the area for the president to come in with executive power and try to resolve everything. And unfortunately, I don't think we're going to like the way he resolves it. This cadre of these neo-Stalinists, of whom the front man, of whom the puppet, is this guy who is purportedly named Barack Obama, they taught them that the only way that you can destroy the quote-unquote evil United States and establish a global totalitarian regime is that you have to collapse the United States from the inside out, primarily economically. And the way you do that is by overloading the federal government with all of these entitlements and all of this debt and then collapse the entire thing from the inside out. We got Obama. Not bad. Not bad at all, I think. Not bad at all, I think. We got Obama. Not bad. We are past the point of no return. We will not be able to stop what is coming, but must be wise enough to prepare and get out of the way. The murder plot involving the death of the dollar did not begin with Obama, but he and other conspirators have accelerated the plans, plots, and schemes for its demise. The ultimate objective is to implement an international currency in tandem with a system of global governance. The problem is that most people are not thinking large enough nor do they understand the magnitude of the lie. They're not seeing the larger picture as their focus is diverted elsewhere. Meanwhile, others continue to adhere to or even perpetuate the dual party meme of governance, holding dearly to the notion that there is a practical difference between the Republican and Democratic parties. Have we not seen sufficient evidence that they are now of one party acting in concert with each other? They cannot see the collusion and backroom deals and continue to hope that the next election will finally change the unchangeable continuity of agenda. Most of the elected officials are on board with the subjugation of the United States to a global system of governance. Some are actively facilitating this agenda, while others are making nominal objections on the stage of political theater, whilst hoping to earn a seat at the global table. It's entertainment for the globalists, distraction of the masses, and diversionary fodder for the talking heads in the media. America has become a captured operation, captured from within. Think of the Vichy French internal collaboration with the enemy, or softening the ground for a full takeover from within. The takeover of America has already happened. The collaborators have already been installed. We are now on a path to complete subjugation of a larger global system of governance. If you continue to doubt this, how else would you explain the numerous examples of our dual party governmental acquiescence of self-destruction? It is a magic show, and many are still captivated by the magician's many diversions, failing to realize that we are engaged in a global war, while being simultaneously hobbled by enemy infiltrators from within. One reason we are seeing new stock market highs is the rush to the dollar from other currencies, especially in the Eurozone. Another reason is the monetization of our debt by the Federal Reserve, despite the previous denials of Ben Bernanke and others. Simply put, the plan by the globalists or the central bankers and those behind them is to create this rush to the US dollar like passengers from a sinking ship to lifeboats. Once the lifeboats are filled to capacity, they will be sunk, and the United States dollar will be completely worthless. As in such a scenario, many will not make it. Many will die from what is coming. What does an economic collapse in the United States, what does it look like? You can expect anywhere between 25 to 50 million dead in the first 90 days. You're going to have people dropping dead from violence, looting, rioting, right? You're going to have people dropping dead from lack of medication. We are the most medicated country on the planet. You're going to be seeing people drop dead from starvation, dehydration, and disease. 
You see where, the, where this country is going. You're going to see more violence in the streets when people lose everything and have nothing left to lose. They lose it. And they're losing it worldwide. There's going to be supply shortage. You're not going to be able to go to the supermarket and get, you know, get your groceries. You're not going to be able to you know, pump gas in your car. The power grid is not going to be on. I'm talking about a massive constriction in the flow of goods and services. I mean, it pretty much ceases during that point. That's what it's going to look like. It's not a pretty picture. Deagle.com has been estimating a massive population reduction and economic collapse for the U.S. 2025 forecast with an even lower population estimate at 65 million. This would mean 80% of the population would have to leave, die, or no longer be part of the United States within 10 years. Like they said, it's going to burn to the ground, Greg. And it's, you know what, and the fire has already been lit. The biggest problem they have is they have regulators that don't regulate. Well, yeah. That's like having a fire department that won't answer the fire bell when it goes. And if you don't answer the fire bell when you're a fireman, things burn to the ground. And that's exactly what's going to happen to America. It's going to burn to the ground because of the absolute criminal, sociopathic nature of the people that have taken charge of your country. And it's going to burn to the ground. We have the equivalent of a mentally defective baboon. And by that, I mean national level United States governance, not only in the executive branch, but also in the Congress. These people are not only all universally psychopaths, but they are all universally slack jawed, mouth breathing imbeciles. Unfortunately, you've grown up hearing voices that incessantly warn of government as nothing more than some separate, sinister entity that's at the root of all our problems. Some of these same vo voices also do their best to gum up the works. They'll warn that tyranny is always lurking just around the corner. Tyranny with a capital T. You should reject these voices. Everything that's been done with torture, rendition, the NDAA, the Patriot Acts 1 and 2, from day one was focused on the American people, period. That's it. It's always been about erasing the Bill of Rights and Constitution and rolling out NSA spying publicly, saying it's for Al-Qaeda, rolling out total control and the end of any underground free market systems in the name of fighting Al-Qaeda, but really shutting down any type of free commerce. This is all about converting us from a free society to a tyranny with a capital T. Just as certain a collapse of the dollar is coming, so will be chaos on the streets of America caused by this plan to kill the dollar. The central bankers and the leaders selected to govern each country have effectively used the Hegelian dialectic to implement their agenda. Just as stated by George H. W. Bush on September the 11th, 1990, their predetermined solution of a new world order is being formed before our very eyes. They have told us what they are doing, but we have chosen not to listen or fail to understand what was being said. The U.S. has always been the firewall against the globalists by their persistence, infiltration of global elitists into our government, and covert subversion from within, we are being led to slaughter. There will be some who dare to resist the pillaging of our bank accounts, the erosion of our rights, and the enslavement that comes with the dismantling of America. The dust clouds visible on the far horizon that watchmen have been reporting for decades can now be seen as an attacking army of barbarians, whose fighters are now on the ladders and cannons are breaching our empire's outer walls. Who knows how long the inner walls of our empire will survive the next wave of their coming attack. Perhaps Ernest Hemingway said it best in referencing John Don from his novel of the same name. And therefore, never send to know for whom the bell tolls. It tolls for thee. In Ingmar Bergman's classic film, Wild Strawberries, the filmmaker, through dreams, nightmares, and flashbacks, tries to make sense out of his troubled past. In the following footage, 
as I make use of the film's most noted and ill-omened sequence, the opening nightmare of Wild Strawberry's chief character, I try to make sense out of America's troubling and disquieting future. Our next stop, America's Coming Nightmare. Yes, America's Coming a Nightmare. The next stop on the investigative journal for next year. And we'll talk all about uh, what's happening in the Trump world. You probably listened to all that about Obama, but nothing's different with Trump. He's just playing the other side of the tune, so to speak. And the end result really is going to be the same. So fasten your seatbelts. Enjoy the rest of this year because next year is going to be quite a year in America. Back, uh, see you next year on the Investigative Journal. The Book of Revelation says the spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus Christ. This is at the very heart of FirstAmendmentRadio.com. In that spirit, we have created the Prophecy Reality News app for all of your mobile devices. Streaming First Amendment Radio 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Available for your Apple, Android device, and smartphone absolutely free. Get the Prophecy Reality News app installed today so you can listen to First Amendment Radio wherever you are. The Prophecy Since the beginning of time, kings have sought it, nations have fought for it, it has been traded, it has been borrowed. It has been purchased. It has been stolen. There's a reason for it. To secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and to our posterity. Invest with the security of gold and silver. Call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188 or visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net. Listen to Financial Survival with your host, Melody Cedarstrom, right here on FirstAmendmentRadio.com at 4 p.m. Eastern or 1 p.m. Pacific Time. Visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net or call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188. Toll free, 1-800-375-4188.